Today we're going to be giving you our top tips, tricks, and advice on getting the best wildlife photos that you can so that you don't have to learn the hard way like we did. We're talking about camera settings, composition, lighting, and even timing. But first, this video is sponsored by the Professional Photographers of America. The first thing you want to practice is targeting. That's getting used to your lens and your camera, and making sure you can find your subject in the viewfinder right away. And the good news is you don't have to have an interesting subject around to do this one. You can just raise your lens and try to get the rock in the frame right away, or maybe it's a leaf. This doesn't need to produce an interesting picture. This is just making sure that when your subject finally appears, you're ready for it and you can get it in the frame right away. Take the time to practice finding subjects in your viewfinder. You're going to thank me when a bird flies by with a fish and you can find it like that. Bald eagle or bald seagull? Ideally, you want to find your subject in the frame right away. But if that doesn't happen for you, a trick to finding it very quickly is to map the area that your subject's in first and make a mental note. So if they're on a branch, you could say, oh, they're right where the branch splits, or they're right by that clump of leaves, or they're right by that flower, and that'll help you map the area so you can find your subject faster. My second tip is learn how to pre-focus. Have you ever raised your camera and you have the subject right in your viewfinder, but it's a blob and it's so blurry that your autofocus can't grab it? That's because you aren't pre-focused and your camera needs to have your subject somewhat within focus to even focus at all. And the way that I deal with that is that I approximate about how far away my subject is. I focus on something still like tree is in the background or a subject in the middle ground. And then I shift my camera to where my subject is to make sure it's in focus enough that my autofocus can grab it. This works especially well if you have a bird that's flying in a blue sky because there's nothing around it for your autofocus to grab onto. So I'll focus on something a little farther away, usually trees in the distance, and then go right back up to my subject. And this happens quickly once you get used to it. You pre-focus, raise your camera, pre-focus, raise your camera. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you got it down, it's like second nature. Let's talk about your camera settings. I always put my camera into shutter priority with auto ISO. I then adjust the shutter quickly depending on the subject. Now, when you're just starting out, you want to err on the side of using a really fast shutter speed. So for still subjects, that might be one one thousandth of a second. And for flying subjects, maybe one thirty two hundredth of a second. Very short to freeze motion and cancel out any camera shake. As you get your technique a little more advanced, try slowing that shutter speed down. That'll produce cleaner images for you. And also showing a little bit of motion can really help out those action shots. So first, get your really fast shutter speed shots of the flying bird, but then slow it down to 1 500th, 1 200th, and see if you can get a sharp head on the animal with a little bit of motion in the wings for a really compelling image. The slower you go with the shutter speed, the lower percentage of shots that are going to be sharp. But that's okay, because you can take hundreds or thousands of shots and just pick the one super sharp shot to share. For more information about my theories on shutter speed, check out the rule of doubles. Let's get nerdy and talk about the shutter speed's relationship to noise. The shorter the shutter speed, the less light your camera can gather. And the less light it gathers, the more noise, little speckles, you're going to see in the image. By using a longer shutter speed, you give your camera a chance to gather more light, thus producing cleaner and sharper images. And as a wildlife photographer craving all that detail, even when cropped, you really want that. I'm recommending using shutter priority, but that's an auto exposure system. You're relying on your camera to decide how bright the image should be. Sometimes it's going to guess wrong. If you're photographing a bright white subject, it might end up overexposed because the camera will expose the darker background. And then you've lost your whole subject if it's blown out, right? So in these cases, you want to use exposure compensation. With bright white subjects, dial in negative one or negative two stops of exposure compensation. And with really dark black subjects, especially on a light background like snow, dial in positive exposure compensation of one or two stops. And every now and then stop and check your images and make sure the exposure and histogram look good. Another tip, shoot raw. This picture seems dark, but I didn't want to overexpose the eagle's white head. I was able to recover the shadows in post because I shot raw. I have a secret. I don't discriminate. 
when I'm out shooting, I see a lot of people ignoring common birds like gulls, and I don't do that because gulls are great for practice. If there aren't any more interesting species around, I'll just take a bunch of pictures of gulls. And that's a great way for me to practice shooting at the lowest shutter speed so that there's less noise. That's a great way to practice your panning. It's a great way to practice getting action shots and more. And if you mess it up, who cares? There's a bunch of goals around that keep on going. And when your subject finally shows up that you're excited about, be it a kingfisher or a lion or whatever you're shooting, you'll be ready. You'll be very ready. And that's all thanks to the goals. Here's a tip for better lighting. Keep your shadow in front of you. That means you have the sun at your back and all of your subjects are gonna be nicely lit by the sun. Well-lit photos also means your photos will have better detail. So here are some pictures that show examples of front-lit, back-lit, and side-lit photos. Another tip, if you're taking wildlife photos, you've probably spent a lot of money on your gear. And if you sign up for PPA, they have gear insurance that covers up to $15,000. That means if something happens to your gear, they have you covered. So don't take a risk. PPA not only has over 900 hours of education, certifications, contracts, and forms, they also have insurance for data loss and your camera gear. PPA recently made huge changes to photo care equipment insurance. The policy now offers flat deductibles to repair and replace your gear, and it covers the full replacement value of your equipment. Sign up for PPA membership today and save $25 using the link in the description below. Thanks PPA for sponsoring this video and for providing a great service for all photographers. Some people imagine they're gonna get great shots by hiking through the woods and finding the animals, but it's better to find one spot and wait for them to come to you. If you walk through the woods, you're gonna be chasing off everything you get near. But animals are much more comfortable if you stay put and they stumble into where you are. So as you're hiking, keep track of where the animals are and then find the comfortable spot. Our final and most important piece of advice is to be consistent and to be persistent. Try to set a regular schedule for yourself and go out every day when you can. Like maybe you get up a little bit early before your family and even if you just go into your backyard and take some pictures, if you do it every day, at some point, you're gonna turn out with some amazing pictures. Yeah, and don't be discouraged if you don't get the best shots right away. It takes practice and it takes time. So just enjoy the process, be at peace with the fact you won't always walk away with the photo you want and just be happy with what you get. It's okay. <laughs> I've had those rough days. Even when nature photography is bad, it's still better than being in the office, yeah, right? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Thanks so much for watching. I hope our tips were helpful for you. Please consider subscribing and giving a like and commenting down below with more of your tips so that other people can learn from you. See you next time. Bye.